Hello everyone, this is Haxaclappa, and today we'll be going over the brand new premium that just got added to Wings of Glory. The Polish F-16C Block 52 Plus. Today we'll be going over how this plane flies, its dogfighting performance, and most importantly, how it does in the current Tier 7 matchmaker. So, let's dive right into it. The first question you want to ask is, how does the Block 52 Plus differ from the normal Tech Tree F16C Block 50? Well, in summary, it's this. It has conformal fuel tanks, a worse engine, a better radar, and RWR. And, well, in this game it has the 120C8, which is a really potent missile. So, to boil it down even further, the plane has inferior flight performance compared to the F-16 Block 50, but it makes up for that in its avionics and the weapon set. And what that means is that the plane is really nasty in the public server. This plane is by far the best tier 7 premium you can buy right now. Now that we got all of the basics out of the way, let's talk about the plane's avionics and its weapon set. We'll start with the radar. The Block 52 Plus is equipped with the AN-APG 68 V9, which is better than the V7 found on the standard Block 50. This is a multi-mode radar. The radar has a gimbal of 60 degrees for both elevation and azimuth. In terms of ranges, it has 136 kilometers of range for a 5 square meter target heading towards it and 119 flying directly away. This radar is not ASA, so it does not have silent single target track. It also does not have LPI or low probability of intercept. Overall, the APG 68 V9 is definitely not the best radar, but it is enough. Next up, the Block 52 Plus has the ATD RWR, which is hands down one of the best RWRs in the game. Not only does it have IFF and threat identification, Missiles have a line which you can line up with the notches on the display to easily defeat missiles. But the star of the show comes at armament. The F-16C Block 52 Plus has the AIM-120 C-8, which is basically an AIM-120C with the AIM-120D Seeker. This means that on top of its best-in-class range, no, Meteor doesn't count, the AIM-120 C-8 has the best-in-class notch filter at 6.5 meters per second and a whopping 5 chaff to successfully chaff it off. And if you're wondering what that means in practice, well, it's a pretty filthy missile to deal with. It's still not as good as the Meteor, though. This video is funded by my UGC business. Buy stuff like the Raptor to support me. For this video, I dropped the UGC shown above. It is free, and the first 50 people who join the game can get it. I also made whatever the hell this is, so comment your name in the description if you want to win it. Here's the link, and thank you for your support. Now, dogfighting is pretty irrelevant, but let's take a look to keep the tradition alive. Now, when it comes to the F-16C Block 52 Plus, it really feels like a bit of a bus. So, the normal F-16 doesn't turn that well, but it has great energy. For the Block 52 Plus, not only is the base turn rate worse, those extra fuel tanks and the worst engine really does nerf and cut into this thing's energy performance. So, when I feel like I'm always on, the back foot when I dogfight with this thing, and while it's definitely not a terrible airframe like the Su-35S or the Mirage 2000, fights are definitely winnable, but the problem in this jet is that your mistakes are extremely punishing. You have to take the fights long term, and it feels like you're fighting for your life the whole time. Generally, with a lot of planes, as long as you take it long term enough, you could probably end up with a shot like this, you can get a kill, but any mistakes will probably end up with you getting killed, and we'll see that in a second. 
So here we've just merged with a Hornet and you can immediately see that things aren't exactly going right. He almost gets the shot off right here, but he wasn't quite able to land it and immediately he's just glued onto my 6. And in this spot, there is absolutely nothing I can do to shake him off. This plane does not have the turn rate required to even properly defend in many scenarios. So that's what makes it really hard sometimes to win in this plane. And if you're wondering, the Japanese F2 rinses the shit out of this thing. Oh, and now we're just going to go back to the Hornet again so I can demonstrate the problem of this plane where it's really hard to even fight for your life. I'm going to be fighting him and I'm going to try to do everything as well as possible. I'm on the plate very safe and you'll just see what happens here. So now we merge and we're going to end up in an endless two circle fight. I don't have a chance in the one circle. So I'm going to have to force that and let's see what happens. So after all of that, I decide to ditch the two circle because it clearly isn't working. And I was trying to cash in on the F-16's vertical performance. And then I realized, hey, this thing has none. I'm getting absolutely rinsed by a Hornet right now in a vertical fight. And that's just disgusting. So I'm going to end up stalling out and he'll stall out right behind me. And well, you'll see what happens. So here, what I'm doing is I'm diving away, trying to use some of the acceleration this plane has. And what I'm going to try to do is do a snap reversal up there. And now I'm just dodging my guns and I've decided that I will start turning around and I'm going to try to catch him off guard. So here I drop my throttle probably a little too much. We're going to go into the head on and now I'm going straight vertical. And right here I actually pull in before him, get that shot in. And then right here when I have the kill shot. <laughs> oh my god. The issue with the Block 52 is that it really just struggles at killing anything more than like an Eagle or the Su-35 or something like that. It's just wildly outclassed. The normal Block 50 already has problems with forcing fights and ending them quickly, but this one just cranks that up to 11. You see, it might be capable of killing the F-15C right here, which it does, and it does that pretty well. But let's take a look at the Su-27. The flanker is a bit of a bust, but in the dogfight, these two planes are actually pretty close. Against the Su-27, you kind of have to play extremely conservatively, as you have to do with basically every single plane when you're in the F-16. Because the moment you get out of that two-circle flow, you start going for the guns. Yeah, it is uh, pretty rough. I would say that the Block 52 is probably better, but I am just really rusty. And I'm definitely not nearly as good as I was a few months ago. So... You know, at the end of the day, I was pretty caught off guard how this thing couldn't just rinse a flanker. If you're two very good pilots, the flanker is probably at the disadvantage, but it's pretty close with this plane, where the normal Block 50, it wouldn't even be a question. So 
So yeah, I think this plane is not that great in the dogfight. Mind you, it's not a shipwreck either. It's not the MiG-29 or the Su-35. But like, it's also not the Tornado, sure. And you're going to be beating MiG-31s with this thing. But on the other hand, you have stuff like the F-16C Block 50. You have stuff like the Rafale. You have stuff like the F-2. You have stuff like the Eurofighter. You have all that stuff who would easily rinse your ass. And you would be spending your entire time trying to stay alive. Only for you to just die eventually when you inevitably make a mistake. The odds are stacked against you when you're in this plane. And that genuinely does make the plane a struggle sometimes when you're in the duels. But also, it does make duels with this thing really fun because it's really rewarding when you actually get a kill against an enemy. So the verdict is that it's not a very good dogfighter and it's definitely not intended for people who have TikTok attention span since your fights are gonna last forever. But at the same time, I can see why people would find this type of gameplay fun, and I think I had quite a bit of fun dogfighting with it. Okay, so whoever is still here, we're gonna go over BVR performance. But first off, give yourself a pat on the back, because you actually had the attention span to get here. Unless you just skipped here. Well, in that case, you're gonna see BVR gameplay. Anyways, let's take a look. Okay, so now when it comes to general public server gameplay, which is primarily BVR, this plane does extremely good. As I said earlier, this plane has basically the second most effective air-to-air -air missile in the game, and that is the M120C-8. Now, I would take all six of them because, to be honest, uh, with lock-on after launch being limited to 20 kilometers, IR missiles just aren't that great anymore. You're probably going to be defending a ton of radar missiles and it would be very hard to get within 20 kilometers of an opponent so generally IR missiles aren't doing that hot right now. So as you can see this plane still climbs pretty well you can hold a 30 degree climb angle if you have enough speed and right now I'm a little slow but if I had a little more speed I should be able to climb all the way to 10 kilometers without much issues at around 30 km degrees climb angle. So I do want to stress that the M120C-8 is basically still a normal missile. It's not a ramjet missile like the Meteor, so you need the altitude for your missiles to go far. If you just saw there, I was able to lock on to a data link target, and you see right here I can lock on to that, and that's because the M120C-8 does have data link launching just like the Meteor. So what that means is that you're less handicapped with your radar set, which obviously this one doesn't have the best radar in the game, but you can make use of your teammates and you could use that to lob missiles at your enemies pretty effectively. So now that I've launched my missiles, I want to immediately get into a defensive position. The benefit of having data link here is that my missiles are able to guide off the data link signals my teammate sends them, so I can go directly 90 degrees with unlike other planes where you'd still have to limit how far off board they are to maintain that data link to your missile. But right here I'm able to have my missiles data linked onto the target while I'm notching and that just makes it a lot better. You don't have to baby your missiles the whole entire time. And once you get to this point, just keep in that defensive position in that notch, and you just wait for the missiles to connect. Now, as you'll see here, the PK isn't exactly that great. And mind you, this was shot when it actually had better stats than it currently does. And people were able to reliably, or at least semi-reliably, defeat these missiles while it was in that more powerful state. Now, if you see right here, I just shot out all my chaff, and I really don't have a choice. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to kinematically defeat the missile. So, the first thing you do in this scenario is you start diving to the deck. The missile does not have propulsion, and if you keep on pulling these turns right here, the missile will bleed excess speed, and it will end up becoming slower than you. And as you see here, 
eventually the missiles just run out of energy or their battery time and they just blow up. So now we've flown directly into the next game and as you can see here I'm climbing up to altitude where I will be able to use these missiles most effectively. So now I'm just watching that range bar down in the far right corner and once I see the missiles in range and it's sufficiently in range I'm going to start lobbing these off. And now I see this group of enemies right there and they all seem like they're in range. And well, I should be launching any time now. Okay, there goes the first one and I'm just spamming all these off. And I immediately break off because I want to get into a more defensive position. As at this altitude missiles are still pretty fast and I want to make sure I have as much time as possible. So I'm just going to fire at the remaining targets here and return to a defensive position, allowing my teammates data link to guide these missiles in. And at this point it's just going to be defending any missiles that are coming at me and just waiting for my missiles to connect. And as you can see right here I got a little greedy with this and I'm just going to lob off that last AMRAM. Now, at this point, I'm just letting the data link guide it in. I could just return to base, but I didn't for some reason. And I'm just watching these missiles just go in. And as you can see, the percent kill on these things isn't crazy high, but it is still definitely good. So right here, we get our first kill, and then those missiles go to nowhere. This missile connects, and now I'm just waiting for those two to see if they're going to hit. So you can see that missile get chaffed off right there, the one that is uh, one kilometer is also not going to hit. So I'm just waiting for that final AMRAM to hopefully find its target. And right here, here comes the missile. So I immediately drop my speed and I start chaffing while in the notch and that gets defeated pretty quickly. And just in time, I can look at this. This missile is doing fine and I'm going to... And well, let's go to my favorite part of this plane, which is just clubbing clueless people with it. I mean, any missile could do that. The C7 is probably going to do just as fine. But the C8 is especially hard because it has the highest number to chaff in the game. And as you can see, these two guys just cannot do anything about this. And they just came out of their spawn and they are just getting absolutely smited with these missiles. The Meteor does the same and it also does it to a better degree usually since it stays fast. Now I can just launch at them as they spawn and I know these guys are going to be collecting the missile eventually. So what is my verdict on this plane? Well the F-16C Block 52 Plus is probably the most beginner friendly plane at the tier right now. The plane has really really good missiles, it has an amazing RWR, and the flight performance isn't terrible. Compared to the F-18 or the Su-27 SM-3 I think it is now, this thing is just leagues ahead of those. The F-18 does not have the climb, it does have C-7s, but it generally isn't that great. Meanwhile, the Su-27 is just a piece of shit that nobody should buy unless you're a experienced player who wants to troll. And by that I mean it's not great, but at the same time it's also the only top tier flanker with a usable flight model. So yeah, I do recommend this plane for people who are just wanting to get a good grinding premium. It just checks all the boxes, it has acceptable flight characteristics for the general game and the missiles on this thing are incredible so i do expect this plane to remain relevant even as we get new planes such as the j10c and m120d amrams so yeah this plane gets a solid recommendation i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i'll see you in the next one